My name is Alexis Martin, and I'm a Knauss Fellow in the Bioenergy Technologies Office at the Department of Energy, and I'll be presenting to you for the Biomass Basics webinar. The purpose of today's webinar is to provide some general background about bioenergy, its creation, and its potential uses. The agenda will first go over some of the definitions involved in bioenergy, as well as discuss some of the types of feedstocks used for bioenergy and the types of products that biomass can produce. Then we'll go into the biomass to biofuels life cycle, which discusses each step from feedstocks to... We'll then discuss the importance of bioenergy and why the Department of Energy is emphasizing research and development into bioenergy. Finally, I'll give a short introduction to the 2016 Bioenergize Me Infographic Challenge and answer some questions from the audience. Today's webinar will run for about half an hour, with five minutes at the end dedicated for answering any questions. Please send any questions or comments you may have from this webinar to the BioEnergize Me team email that's listed up on the screen. If you have any general questions about the 2016 BioEnergize Me infographic challenge or this webinar series, please feel free to reach out to us at the email address and we'll address them in future webinars. All slides from this presentation, as well as a recording of this webinar, will be available online at the Bioenergy Technologies Office website, which is up on the screen. This webinar series can be used as a resource for teams participating in the 2016 Bioenergize Me Infographic Challenge. So getting into it, bioenergy is a form of renewable energy derived from biomass to generate heat and electricity, biofuels, biochemicals, and other energy-related bioproducts that are produced from biomass. Biomass is the organic material that has stored sunlight in the form of chemical energy. Plants can be thought of as warehouses for solar energy. Through photosynthesis, plants collect sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water, and convert it into chemical energy in the form of sugars that are stored in their biomass. Now, one type of sugar that is created by biomass is called cellulose. Cellulose is the main component of plant cell walls. Made from sugar molecules, cellulose can be thought of as the structural frame of the plant cell wall, sort of like the steel beams in a building. Scientists and engineers are using this cellulose to create bioenergy. Biomass that is used for bioenergy production is called a feedstock. There are five different types of feedstocks that I will be mentioning today that are primarily used for bioenergy production. Agricultural residues, forest residues, energy crops, algae, and municipal solid waste. Now, agricultural residues are plant parts that are left in the field after harvest. This plant matter and secondary residues, like manure and food processing waste, can be useful feedstocks for bioenergy. Forest residues are leftover plant or wood material from logging operations, forest management, and land clearing. Secondary residues, like mill waste, supplement this category. Energy crops are fast-growing trees and perennial grasses that are specifically grown for energy uses. Trees and perennial grasses can often be grown on land that is less suitable for conventional crops and can stabilize the soil. Many macroalgae, microalgae, and cyanobacteria carry out photosynthesis to drive rapid biomass growth. Algae biomass can contain high levels of oil, making it a promising feedstock for biofuels, including renewable gasoline. Municipal solid waste such as dead leaves, food scraps, and other garbage that's thrown out by consumers like you and me, has also has the potential to be a bioenergy feedstock. Besides fuels, biomass can also produce electricity, products such as plastics and cleaning agents, chemicals, and heat and steam. Fuels produced by biomass include ethanol, biodiesel, and renewable diesel. Ethanol is an alcohol made by fermenting the sugar components of biomass. Ethanol is now used as a fuel additive for cars at a 10% blend, further reducing the need for oil import. 
It is also blended in gasoline to increase octane and improve vehicle emissions. Biodiesel is a mixture of fatty acids made from vegetable oils, animal fats, or recycled greases. Biodiesel can also be used as a fuel for vehicles in its pure form, but it is usually used as a petroleum diesel additive to reduce levels of air toxics and pollution particles from diesel-powered vehicles. And renewable diesel is a good alternative to petroleum-based diesel. It is chemically similar to regular diesel, but releases the lowest emissions of ethanol, biodiesel, renewable diesel. Biomass power or biopower technologies convert renewable biomass fuels into heat and electricity using processes similar to that used with fossil fuels. Next to hydropower, more electricity is generated from biomass than any other renewable re energy resource in the United States. A key attribute of biomass is its availability upon demand. The energy is stored within the biomass until it is needed, whereas other forms of renewable energy are dependent on variable environmental conditions, such as wind speed or sunlight intensity. Until several decades ago in the United States, biomass was primarily used to provide heat for cooking and comfort. Technologies that can generate electricity from the energy in biomass fuels have since been developed. The scale is small enough to be used on a farm or in remote villages, or even large enough to provide power in a small city. Today, petroleum is refined to make chemical feedstocks used in thousands of products. Many of these petroleum-based feedstocks could be replaced with value-added chemicals produced from biomass to manufacture clothing, plastic, lubricants, and other products. The emerging U.S. bio-based products industry combines expertise and technology from agriculture, forest products, and chemical industries to create plastic, chemicals, and composite materials from renewable resources, including agricultural crops and residues, trees and forest residues, grasses, animal waste, and municipal solid waste. There are five steps to turning biomass into bioenergy. Feedstock supply and harvesting, transportation of feedstocks to the biorefinery, conversion of feedstock to fuels and products at the biorefinery, distribution of fuels and products at gas stations, stores, and other places that use gasoline and ethanol, and pro product and fuel consumption by consumers like you and me. Now, in the first two steps of the biofuels life cycle, which is feedstock uh, harvesting and transport, the steps include growing the biomass, harvesting it, making sure that it is in small enough pieces to transport, because you really wouldn't want to transport huge amounts of wood or garbage without breaking it down, and then placing the transported feedstock supply in a storage area at the biorefinery. It's important to note that bioenergy uses purpose-grown woody crops and woody residues that cannot be used to make lumber and other wood-based products, such as forest thinning, tree limbs, and tree tops. Picture this as an example. I own and manage some land in Virginia where I grow oak trees that are used to make lumber, as well as fast-growing dedicated woody biomass poplar and southern pine trees. I contract a logging company to come in and cut down the trees and take the wood to make lumber. However, much of the tree is left over from the process of collecting the lumber, such as tree branches and limbs, stumps, and the treetops. That's where bioenergy comes in. I can harvest and process those leftover parts of the trees, as well as the dedicated woody trees that I grow on my property, which are those poplar and southern pine trees such as what is shown in the images of this slide. So going into the standing and popular southern pine trees, the process of harvesting these includes felling them by machines and placing those trees in a pile in a process called yarding. The piled trees, as well as the leftover tree limbs, stumps, and treetops are delimbed and debarked with a grappling machine and then broken into small pieces by passing through the chipper. These smaller chipped pieces allow for easier transport to biorefinery. After the chipped woody biomass arrives at the biorefinery, it is stored until it is ready to process. 
The biomass is dried in larger dryers, so then it can be converted into fuels and products. So we've now discussed that a biorefinery is where solid feedstock is converted into a finished product or fuel, but how does that really happen? Well, first, the biomass brought to the biorefinery is treated with heat and chemicals, which help dry the biomass and get it ready for the next step of breaking it down even further. Next, the treated biomass moves to a tank where enzymes are added to break down the cellulose in the biomass into simple sugars. Those simple sugars are then fermented in a tank by microbes, creating ethanol. Finally, the ethanol is cleaned and purified in preparation for distribution to gas stations, airports, and other uses for ethanol. There are two main conversion pathways to turn the biomass into products like biofuels, bioproducts, and biopower. First, thermochemical conversion, and second, biochemical conversion. Thermochemical conversion, which is the process being pointed to with the red arrow, uses heat as the primary mechanism for converting biomass into a gas or liquid intermediate. These intermediates are then upgraded, which means that they remove the oxygen using substances, substances that increase the rate of a chemical reaction called catalyst to create an oil that is composed of hydrogen and carbon that can be combined and blended with existing liquid fuels we use, create products, or generate biopower. Biochemical conversion, which is the process being pointed to with the blue arrow, uses mild heat, mechanical, and chemical processes to break down the biomass into intermediates, such as carbohydrates. These intermediates are then further broken down into sugars, which are the building blocks for biofuels. Catalysts, either biological, like enzymes and organisms, or chemical in nature, convert the sugars to liquid fuels or other chemicals. So after going through the biorefinery, finished products and fuels travel to gas stations, airports, marinas, stores, warehouses, and other locations where we, con us consumers, can purchase and use the bi new biomass-derived products. So thinking of biofuels, there are a variety of modes of transportation that can use bio biomass-based fuels, including buses, heavier duty trucks, cars, snow plows and other big uh, industrial sized trucks, boats, airplanes, and light duty pickup trucks that we drive every day. All this leads to the question, why are biofuels and bioenergy important? Well, they are important because of what they replace, and they replace fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are a diminishing resource, or they will eventually be all used up. They take millions of years to form within the Earth. And once we use up all of our fossil fuels, we will not have additional supplies until millions of years in the future. Use of fossil fuels can be harmful to humans and the environment. When fossil fuels are burned, they release carbon dioxide and other gases into the atmosphere. Some of these gases pollute the air we breathe and the water we drink as well as contribute to climate change. Also, some of these gases threaten ecosystems and could lead to floods, drought, or famine in some parts of the world. Because of the carbon dioxide being emitted by the, into the air by fossil fuels, there is an increasing amount of pollution. When the carbon is released into the air through burning it to power vehicles or to heat factories, then it mixes with oxygen and becomes carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is heavier than other gases in our atmosphere and doesn't allow the warm rays of the sun to escape the atmosphere at night. Therefore, bioenergy is an important resource for the future of the United States. Increased production and use of biofuels will result, result in a variety of social, economic, and environmental benefits to the nation, including improved national energy security.
the United States economy is heavily dependent on oil imports. Containing 4% of the world's population, our nation consumes 25% of the world's oil. A quarter of that oil that, the, that we consume is imported. If global supply of fossil fuels decreases, their prices will increase and threaten the domestic supply of energy. The nation's dependence on foreign oil leaves the country vulnerable to disruptions in the oil supplies due to natural disasters, political disruptions, and price fluctuations. One way to diversify our energy supply and to build economic security is to increase our consumption of domestically produced renewable energy sources, such as biomass-derived fuels. Biofuels play an important role in as near-term substitutes for petroleum-based fuels. Small changes in crude oil prices or supplies can have an enormous negative impact on the, negative, on the American economy. Developing a strong industry for biomass-based fuels, power, and products in the United States will have tremendous economic benefits, including trade deficit reduction and job creation. In fact, in 2010, the ethanol industry helped create more than 400,000 jobs in all sectors of the, bio of the economy, boosted the national household income by $36 billion through increased economic activity and new jobs, and added an estimated $7 billion in federal tax revenue and nearly $4 billion in state and local tax revenue. Growth of the biomass industry is creating new markets and employment for farmers and foresters, as well as job opportunities in processing and distribution. Biofuels don't just create positive impacts for the economy and national security. Growing biomass has important land, habitat, and soil conservation benefits. Producing energy from residues in forests, mills, and landfills avoids the release of methane into the atmosphere from the decomposition of unused wood and agricultural waste. Depending on how much fossil energy is used to grow and process biomass feedstock, the result is a substantial reduction of net greenhouse gas emissions. Most importantly, biomass is the only renewable energy source that can be directly substituted for petroleum-based transportation fuels which account for one-third of the United States' carbon dioxide emissions. Most of the carbon dioxide and other harmful emissions can be alleviated by substituting biofuels for fossil fuels or by using them as fuel additives, such as ethanol. Consequently, biofuels can play an important role in addressing climate change by reducing net greenhouse gas emissions. So one way for teachers and students to get more involved with biomass and bioenergy is to participate in the 2016 Bioenergize Me Infographic Challenge. The overall goal of the competition is to enable students to be better, more informed consumers of energy information, and to have the ability to dispel energy myths they may encounter in the media and other sources of information. Teams of two to five students from ninth through twelfth grade create infographics to learn about bioenergy as well as educate others about what they have learned. Selected teams will have the opportunity to promote their infographic in an 11-day social media campaign. Winners are selected based off of the quality of the infographic and the effectiveness of the team's social media campaign. Resources for the Bioenergize Me Infographic Challenge are ready to be used in classrooms for general lessons about bioenergy, as well as participating in the competition. Some resources that are provided as part of the competition include sources from the Library of Congress, in research topics and prompts in bioenergy, guidance on how to do research and references, links to government-funded publications, and guides on how to create infographics and social media campaigns. So up on the screen, you'll see the top three spring 2015 finalists of the 2015 Infographic Challenge. The first one is called Cellulosic Ethanol. The second one and the third one are both dealing or encompassing the topic of algae. So Cellulosic Ethanol was the overall winner of the 2015 challenge and was designed by students from Williamsburg High School for Architecture and Design in Brooklyn, New York. The picture up on the screen is of the winning team at the Bioenergy 2015 conference here in Washington, D.C. 
the overall winning team of the 2016 Infographic Challenge will have the opportunity to come to Washington, D.C. next July to share their infographic at Bioenergy 2016 conference. Another cool interactive resource on the Bioenergize Me website is the challenge map, where anyone can view the infographics that have been submitted in previous competitions by student teams across the country. If you click on a region, you can view individual schools in a city and the variety of infographics that have been submitted by each topic. So, for example, I'm going to click through to go through the 47 on the right hand of the screen towards the um, northeast region of the United States. Then I will click on the 32 circle that's near the Philadelphia region. Going even farther down and more in detail, I click on the 30 near the Chester, Philadelphia area. And up pops this really colorful spiral, which you can click on these colored markers to see details about the infographic. So I'm going to click on one of these, and it opens up information about a specific infographic that's been submitted. You can then click View Infographic on the bottom of this pop-up to access the infographics webpage. For instance, for this one, History of Bioenergy's infographic will pop up. Now, if you go back to the main map, you can click on these little black, three black markers that are in the middle of the screen to learn more about the U.S. integrated biorefinery projects that have received funding from the Bioenergy Technologies Office. So it gives a little bit of a description of the, each integrated biorefinery and opportunities for you to learn more information about each one. So this map can be accessed on the Bioenergy webpage or at the link provided on the screen, which will be provided in the recorded webinar. So I'd like to thank you for your attention and being participating in our first Biomass Basics webinar. And we've received a couple of questions so far on the actual challenge and about this webinar. So I'm going to take a few minutes just to go through these questions. So our first question is, how can students and teachers learn more about bioenergy? So a couple of ways that they can learn more about bioenergy is visiting the U.S. Department of Energy's Bioenergy Technologies Office website. And there's also a specific educational resources located under the Education and Workforce Development tab. You can also participate in the 2016 Bioenergize Me Infographic Challenge. Also, we have a, um, an opportunity to collaborate with SciStu Chat on Thursday, September 10th, which is a Twitter discussion about bioenergy this month. Also, if you want to learn more about work, upcoming workforce development and education events, you can sign up for the Bioenergy Technologies Office listserv for more information. The prompts are another question we've gotten are what are the prompts for the 2016 bioenergy that bioenergize me infographic challenge? Well, this year's theme is exploring the future American energy landscape. There are four topic areas. The first one is bioenergy history. The second is workforce and education. The third is science and technology. And the fourth is environmental impact. Specific questions for each prompt are available on the Bioenergize Me website and will be the topic of an upcoming webinar, so please stay tuned. Another question we've gotten are, are there any more webinars planned in the near future on the Bioenergize Me challenge? Well, there certainly are. There are more webinars being planned on various topics, including the prompt, uh, discussion with past winners, and how to go through the logistics of the actual challenge. We invite you to ask and send us questions to the Bioenergize Me team email, which we've listed up on the webinar and is available in the recording, which we will then answer any questions that we get through webinar or during subsequent webinars. And if we don't get it through all the questions today that we've received, we'll definitely answer them in upcoming webinars as well. So another question we've gotten is, can this webinar be used as a resource for the 2016 challenge? And we say, of course it can. This webinar is designed to be used as a resource for teams competing in the 2016 challenge. This webinar is also recorded and can be played at any time. We're also in the process of getting a professional development unit certificate for teachers for this actual webinar, so it can be counted as a professional development activity. We have, let's see. I think that's all the questions.
questions that we can answer at this time. But any questions that people may have submitted and we have not gotten to today, we will definitely get back to you um, in future webinars or by email. So please stay tuned. So thank you so much for coming today and listening in, and we hope to see you soon. Thanks.